Okay, so it's 18.04. Welcome, everyone. We are uh, not more panelists and visitors. That is good. That is good. For all visitors, this is a Zoom webinar, not a Zoom meeting. So it's perfectly normal that you cannot activate your audio and video. Um, we will have a panel discussion among the panel for you to listen to, which we will also record. If you have questions, there is a Q&A box at the bottom. There should be one there. Uh, yeah, there's a Q&A box at the bottom um, or F&A, depending on your language settings. Um, if you have a question, answer that question there and we will just pick it up and answer it. Um, I think we are going to do the panel discussion for about 25 minutes or something and then basically promote everybody to panelists and then we can have an open discussion with everybody. Um, this discussion is being recorded. Recording is configured so that it records only the active speaker um, and not the whole gallery. So if you do not want to be recorded, the only thing you have to do is to stay stumm and just use the chat or the f &A box for your questions. Um, so without further ado, I will make a panel round with, uh, um, so I wanted to start, kick this panel off by going, doing a little round robin question. I thought about three questions all of five minutes today. Uh, and I thought that everybody can answer those questions um, going once around the panel um, and use the opportunity to introduce themselves while they answer, before they answer those questions. So then I do not have to introduce you. That would be futile. So my three questions are, um, the first question is um, from, in your opinion, um, was the remote summit a substitute or a, even a decent substitute? And what did you miss most uh, comparing it to the real thing? The second question would be, what was the most positive announcement for you in the remote summit? And the third question would be, what was the least awesome announcement during the remote summit? Because there's nothing bad coming from it. There's only awesome and <laughs> less awesome. So, um, so what was the least awesome? Um, and we start, um, I guess, first name basis, Christian Koch. Yeah, you, know, you are first in line. If you Boy, just uh, Christian Reichert, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Christian, for that. Uh, uh, no worries. Uh, uh, I, I had a look at the participants, and I think in that round we can be honest. Uh, it was boring. It was not <laughs> even worth the money they invested in the video conferencing tool. Uh, uh, no, no. This I, I think at the end. Uh, um, um, is it, it was uh, information that could be provided in a better way and it was not enough information for that huge uh, announcement uh, of an event. Um, as, a, as a summary, um, I think we saw some cloud announcement in the enterprise scenario that will change our way to think from the German perspective or from the West European perspective, how cloud will develop within the next years. Um, and this is something I get more awareness about um, because currently from our perspective, we are working a lot with single servers, with data centers, and there are some minor companies, they are willing to move to the cloud. And with the new enterprise offerings, you see that this is developing with speed. Um, and I think this was an announcement uh, um, that, that shows up that Atlassian will have the strength to convince the user on a long-term scenario to move to the cloud yeah. or to some bridge technology first and then to the cloud, to finally to the Atlassian cloud. Um, and yeah, everything else was unimportant. Um, so so, so or, or, or maybe we are the wrong persons then 
because we're reading the partner portal, we're reading announcement, we have at least two Slack channels open, one for the Dach Germany uh, region with the Atlassian guys, one from the marketplace with the Atlassian uh, um, um, area. So my hope from the app vendor point of view was that the, the Forge development uh, uh, thing um, would be yeah, more interesting, but this is not enough currently. So it's a little bit too slow, let's say. And if you want to develop cloud applications for the marketplace, you are not allowed to wait um, for the uh, Forge development environment. Yeah, that's from my side. And my name is Christian. I'm co-founder of Scandio and we are a platinum solution partner. And with the beginning of that year, we founded a small company called Lively Apps for marketplace applications. Sorry, I forgot that. Okay, perfect. Thanks for that. So the next one will be Christian. So another Christian. Another um, Christian, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Another <laughs> Christian, that's right. <laughs> well, we, we don't look alike. The only thing we share at the moment is sort of we drink beer. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I think I have to holistically agree with uh, uh, the other Christian. Um, it's, um, I mean, introduction, for us, sorry, introduction first, maybe? Okay, yeah, uh, Christian Reichert, um, I'm the uh, co founder and CEO of Resolution. Uh, we do a lot of uh, Atlassian apps, we are um, top platinum vendor. Um, and a lot of our apps are in that space of single sign-on, um, user management, um, those kind of things on, on server and, uh, and data center. Um, so very enterprise focused, um, <clears throat> but also um, some small apps in, um, around the place at the moment. Um, so um, yeah, f first of all, um, uh, you are going to your first question, uh, was it a good substitute? Um, I have to say absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, we all know, um, I mean, Summit for me very often is about networking, meeting people I otherwise don't get to see. Um, there is no easy way to do that remotely. Yeah, and um, this format of the remote summit didn't provide any of that because, uh, I mean, the site looked like from 1991 um, and the chat tool was probably worse than, IRC, uh, than my IRC client from about 20 years ago. Yeah, so um, there was not much of an interaction that you could have had with, uh, with people. Um, uh, yeah, so, so things like Zoom or other more video conferencing like solutions and that stuff would probably would have um, better. So as a sponsor, if I would have had to pay for that, we didn't have to pay for the um, remote summit. And even as an attendee, if I would have had to pay for it, I think I would have been utterly disappointed. Um, in what I would have gotten from my money. Um, since it was all free um, and probably not a lot of time to prepare, I say probably kudos to them that they tried, but, um, but posting the um, sessions on YouTube would have just been probably a, a nicer experience for everyone. Yeah. Um, so um, <clears throat> if, if they, um, um, I personally still think a remote summit or um, a remote component for after summit to stay in touch, to have some webinars, to have access to the content and maybe some, some more interaction would be a nice thing and a useful thing to have, but certainly not in the way and not on the platform that they have for the, that they had for this remote summit. Yeah. So um, that's one thing. Um, in terms of towards the most awesome announcements, um, I'm going to be in the in similar camp as uh, the other Christian. Uh, I think um, the enterprise cloud stuff um, is the uh, most interesting one. Not as in it's ready and um, it's going to change the world straight away. Uh, but I think it, it addresses a lot of issues that larger enterprises had with cloud. Yeah, lack of a sandbox, less of a lack of testing environments, um, et cetera. There's a lot of things it doesn't address yet. Um, but it still will enable more people to move to cloud who want to move. Um, and I also think if they go um, a lot more into that direction and take a lot of other stops out and as an app vendor, 
I have to say, um, a lot of the extensibility, API av uh, availability, and those kind of things. Um, um, then um, I think it's a lot more realistic um, that we can see um, larger enterprises to move to um, Atlassian Cloud uh, if they keep going in that direction. Yeah. A year ago, I probably would have said um, Atlassian Cloud is nice for small companies, small users, people who don't need uh, much uh, customization, but any larger enterprise who needs that will remain on uh, at least data center. And I think that's still true for the foreseeable future, but at least Atlassian Enterprise Cloud um, goes a lot more into the direction that you can see um, um, that I might not make the same statement next year or in two years' time. Yeah. Um, as an app vendor, again, Forge is um, also uh, very interesting, uh, but not also as an app vendor. I think uh, today, uh, in, in the future, Forge will allow a lot um, more apps in, in the marketplace and apps that have less issues with, um, um, with trust, yeah, because it's all on Atlassian managed infrastructure and um, a lot more restricted and secure by nature as opposed to the Atlassian Connect integration framework. Um, uh, but I also think um, um, Forge, even today, if you, if you are on cloud um, and need to do some small customizations to your Jira instance um, or Confluence, that's absolutely worth looking at. Yeah, so if you, if you need a small macro, if you need a small connection to, a, to push data or pull data from somewhere else, um, or want um, some small customization and you feel comfortable more around the, let's say, um, Node.js um, um, environment or um, um, AWS Lambda, um, then it's absolutely something to look at um, where you can probably um, do some small, um, pretty cool stuff. And um, they also have um, a Slack channel. If you get access to the beta, you also get invited to that Slack channel. Um, and people there share some um, nice small and usually open source them some small nice examples um, that they've written and there's some cool stuff in it yeah so i think you can see that if they stick um, to forge and um, keep building on it um, that is going to be a, a powerful extension framework um, um, for um, for atlassian cloud a little bit what um, apex is on salesforce.com um, different technology behind it i know that but there's a lot of customizability you can do on, for example, salesforce.com. And I think in a, in a similar way, um, that power can come to Jira, Confluence, Cloud, et cetera, um, with uh, Forge. Um, a lot of other small announcements, also um, uh, a lot of announcements around um, uh, data center, for example, um, uh, in terms of um, API rating. So just for bigger enterprises, there's a lot of um, uh, improvements coming in, um, which leads me also to the least awesome announcement for me. And that's partly least uh, favorite um, uh, for egoistic reasons. Um, they expand um, more the single sign on capabilities of data center. So that's certainly gonna take a few customers away from us. Um, but it, um, the thing that really concerns me much more is actually, um, uh, that I feel at Lessin has lost a little bit their way in the um, ecosystem. Yeah, I think part of the power of um, of Atlassian was always the community behind it, um, and also the ecosystem of app vendors um, that um, build apps to extend the platforms um, and give people features that they need. Yeah, and um, I, I, I just give you a, a comparison there. Um, Three years ago or so, they announced SAML for the data center, yeah? And at that point, we were one of the few uh, plugins to do SAML single sign-on uh, for data center. But in those cases, when they would add a feature that, let's say, threatens your app or could put you out of business or the sales, um, they would usually give you a call six months ahead of time and um, tell you, hey, that's the features we're planning to do, that's um, et cetera. Um, um, so on, um, so that you could prepare, that you could also um, have an idea of what are they building, what are they coming out with, how can we differentiate, um, etc. Yeah, this time, the first time we heard about uh, some of the features that are coming in single sign-on, 
data center was in the summit announcement. Yeah. And I talked to some other app vendors um, and a lot of them complained to Atlassian uh, about it. Um, it happened with other features and other apps, uh, both in cloud and uh, data center as well. And I think that is absolutely not good. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, we are big enough that that doesn't kill us and um, we're old enough to um, be okay with it. But if I'm a small vendor, um, or if I imagine I'm a small vendor who builds, who thinks about um, uh, leaving their job to be an app vendor in the Atlassian ecosystem, etc., cetera, um, and the outlook is that they can just kill your app overnight without giving you any notice, um, that just not a great um, way to deal with the um, with the ecosystem yeah and I know there are a few people in Atlassian um, very hard to try to get a lot more of that ecosystem and partnership DNA back into the company um, and, and they really have a tough job um, to do that because Atlassian now is so many people uh, but that is the least awesome part for me that I see um, them losing a little bit of that ecosystem partnership DNA which I think um, is part of what got them where they are now. Cool. So based on the names, I'm probably next in line. Yes, you yeah, are. Go, go ahead, Daniel. Thanks. Uh, Daniel from uh, Kreuzwerker, also fellow solution partner uh, in the Atlassian ecosystem. Um, I was, to be honest, like, uh, I mean, a lot has been said about the, uh, let's say the, the aged uh, or coming to age platform that they use. And I completely agree. It, it, it felt a little bit like IRC uh, a couple of years back um, because I mean, you could just be uh, pretty much like the physical experience. You could only be at one boost at a time and, and, and not like having multiple chat windows open. Um, but I just like continued um, or try to continue what I do at most summits, just like dropping by at all the partner booths, dropping by at the lesson booths, going to the university, certification booths, chatting with people, uh, checking in, um, and that's that's part of my rituals basically when 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 I'm present uh, at the summit. And this, um, I mean, it didn't replace it didn't replace the, the the physical experience of being there, talking to people, obviously. But it was still nice catching up with all the people that that you know, um, like over years from from summit and um, uh, yeah. So that, that was on the positive side of things, so that you at least had the chance um, to catch up and not wait another year um, to be able to catch up with all those guys. Um, a lot has been said also on 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 the let's say most positive announcement. I would also have named the Lessian Enterprise, not, not just because uh, it, we made our first keynote appearance without even paying for it um, as one of the, the uh, launch partners of, uh, of, of Atlassian Enterprise Cloud, um, but also because it adds a lot of features that, that Christian, uh, the, the second Christian uh, already outlined that, that are missing um, in Atlassian's cloud offering uh, today, um, such as sandbox, multiple environments, um, picking what kind of release stream you want to be on. So not being the guinea pig for all the newest features being rolled out or enforced on your instance, but, but being able to just like see them on a sandbox environment and then preparing your users uh, to, to actually get those new features rolled out to you in time. Um, what I was enjoying, um, also talk-wise, there was one session by Maren Hotbett from Atlassian. Um, she was basically um, talking about uh, the 10 myth about um, uh, the, the Atlassian cloud today. And um, like what we notice in consulting day to day is um, that people have very, very varying understandings of what Atlassian's uh, cloud offering is capable of today. Uh, because it's so it's changing so fast and and i mean we as a solution partner or me personally we're living in kind of a filter bubble like i mean we're, we're breathing atlassian through all the channels that the first christian already mentioned there's at least three atlassian shared slack channels that you're active in you have the partner channel you're part of uh, part of so many early access programs and that you're always up to date but but from a consumer perspective just like getting what the current state of of uh, of features is with all the announcement that you read on or can Google, like uh, a data, um, data locality, is it a feature that, that the standard cloud plan has? Like if you would Google for it, you would probably find it and then say like, yeah, it's fine. But, but up on further inspection, you see, oh, that's a feature of uh, premium and enterprise plans and it's EAP. 
Um, so this is something where that, that talk helped navigating the, the current state of what's available today and, and what has been planned. Um, there's two pages at Lessing Shares based on, on, on trust and, and state of certification for the, for the cloud offering, but, but also uh, the roadmap, like what is currently there and, and what's coming that's helpful in that regard. Um, for me, the, the least um, awesome announcement, just, just because like a couple of colleagues in mine, uh, we were just like exchanging looks like, oh, this is a feature now, um, because we've been deploying this for years, um, basically a single node data center. Um, so that there are certain uh, uh, certain user tires where a data center license might be cheaper or, or based on the features, you might want to get data, data center features like, like project archiving or something. Uh, but you don't want to have the infrastructure with uh, full multi-node load balance operations. And then um, we've been deploying single node data center installations for years. And now all of a sudden, this is a feature. And we're like, oh, that's the thing now. Um, so that was for us the least awesome announcement. Apart from that, um, well, I, I personally enjoyed the experience chatting, chatting along with a couple of guys um, from a lesson that, that I wouldn't have otherwise probably not talk to um, uh, in the up and coming days. And in the end, I got a $50 voucher for the lesson swag store out of it. So I'm like, I'm perfectly fine with the experience on my end. But I'm also looking forward to, to the real event next year. Um, but yeah. So I'll hand over to Lars probably then. Yes, Lars, go ahead. Yeah, I just need to need to uh, unmute myself. Uh, hi, I'm Lars from Divicon, another solution partner. Um, uh, I I do totally disagree <laughs> um, uh, with the uh, with the uh, tools and the way uh, the Atlassian summit uh, happened at the end of the day. I think it was like a major su success to have a remote summit. But uh, the tools they were using uh, were really old school and a bit of like, yes, 80s, well, 87, 90s maybe. Um, and I, I, I don't think that's a replacement or it was not a drug uh, replacement at all. Um, I think it could have been better with interaction and a bit like live elements like every, if you're watching German telly uh, on, on a Sunday, on a Sunday uh, evening, then you have a Twitter wall, uh, like connected to the chart or what's, what's happening on the screen. And that's 10 times more interactive than anything that happened um, uh, there. And it was a bit of like scripted, scripted sessions, scripted humor in the end of the day. People tried to play their scripted uh, sessions and it was, well, I didn't like it that much, but uh, that's probably simply because uh, I, I was so excited to go to the real event. So that that's why I was so disappointed. That's my, my point here. Um, and I think, um, well, like everybody else said already, uh, Atlassian Enterprise Cloud, yes, that was a big announcement. That was the huge thing. Sort of, and um, this will dramatically change the business or the situation for the clients. Uh, it will come sooner than we all think. I think that's coming really fast, like the, the pace and the, the speed of change uh, that is happening on the Atlassian side and on the cloud side of Atlassian. Um, that's like really happening now and it will change our business dramatically. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I think um, I was uh, not disappointed by an announcement, but I was disappointed that they did not announce end of server in 24 months. That sort of stuff. I would have loved to get this message from Atlassian that they will announce, they, would, they, would, they should have announced, that's more my point of view, they should have announced end of server in 24 or 36 months, just to make sure everybody is prepared, then painting a roadmap from here into the future. Yeah, what I know, I know. But I think that's, that would be the fairest and most transparent thing that you can do. Painting a roadmap, telling the people, okay, server will eventually die 
well, eventually, they, so we'll have an end of lifetime. Um, and it's happening, and it's happening in the near future. It's my speculation. I don't have uh, more details than you have, but from all what I've heard. And I was talking to some guys, uh, other partners who are in that partner council, getting some more exclusive information before the summit. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, the way we do work is changing, not only because of the virus, but also about like just because of new products and things we have to adapt. And that's quite ex exciting. That's quite exciting. I really, what did I miss? I did miss, or uh, what, what I don't, what didn't like a lot was like that they uh, didn't use the chance for the, like normally at the Atlassian Summit for all of you who are not like partners, there's a partner day or a partner event that's dedicated only for the partners. And so that you can like uh, exchange some opinions and talking, just having some discussions or that they address directly uh, information to the partners regarding the partner program and all that, all, all, all that stuff. And um, I didn't like it a lot that there was like a top down information changing changes in the partner program that they, they, they could have, use the opportunity to directly communicate with the partners at that at Lesson Summit in the Partner Day sort of event style. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's, that's all for now. Uh, I was, uh, I, Hubert, uh, I was so disappointed by the uh, event because uh, we wanted to have some drinks in Vegas. Didn't we? <laughs> yes, I still owe you a drink, so that's the reason. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I, I still it? remember about that. No worries. Yes, yes, we wanted to. So <laughs> that's me. That was me. Okay, so my turn. So I'm Hubert Good. I work for the eBay as Atlassian Solution Architect. So I'm not uh, Atlassian partner. So I will tell you the vision from that uh, customer of Atlassian product. So for me, Summit was really disappointing because. I expect something more like our kind of meetings that we will have some interaction maybe with Atlassian owners, or we will have at least some kind of interaction at least with the Atlassian partners like you. So you will have like your presentation then we can ask you a random question. For me, it looked the format looked like YouTube as somebody mentioned before, because it was like one way interaction. So you watch it, that's it. And except of that, there was a second thing that for customer like eBay, there were no contact at all. Like there were no new information for us. So, so we are running server version. So either it was not mentioned in the keynote and none of the 10 or 20 uh, webinars that were there, none of them was related to the server. Even the one was only related to data center about some security. So it was not related to us at all. So the problem was that then my manager asked me, what is the outcome of that summit? And I said, I have no new information. I can't tell you anything. I spent like 10 hours watching that stuff and I don't have any interesting information for eBay about that, the future, the new features and what will happen. It was all the time about cloud, cloud enterprise perfect, but eBay statement so far is we will never go and use that because we want to have our, we have our own public cloud uh, and we will never deploy something to that. That's at least that's for 2020 year 21, 22 probably. And I think there are many companies like that in not only in Germany. I understand that Atlassian is looking at the money and the profit. That's why they are pushing so, so much for that cloud. But I still uh, think that there will, there will be many companies that will reject that transition, let's say about that. Because I, I really like the idea how you guys doing with deploying the server or data center in AWS or Google Cloud or or Azure, and I think that's the future, not deploying the enterprise level customers to Atlas and Cloud. I know that there it could work like Salesforce is doing, and I think it's my personal opinion that Atlassian 
um, is looking at Salesforce and would like to also have something like that because it's as you can see even on the value of Salesforce and Atlassian you can see what's the difference in the revenue and so on and so yeah so it was a really disappointing so from the nice things so yeah I like the most that you can manage releases in the cloud for that customer that are using that, for example, for small companies that the, my friends are running startups, then can like select the features that they want to use. So they are not guinea pig anymore. So I think it's really cool. And if you ask me if it was worth it to create that, mm, Maybe yes, maybe not. I, I have like feeling that it could be like YouTube channel, that's it. And uh, I don't want to discuss about the technology from 1980 and probably written in COBOL still by Atlassian developers and that's it. Because like that chat, and also I was really disappointed about how they treat the uh, partner. So what was that? It was like page to the Vicky of the partner. What the hell is that? What kind of interaction is that? And the chat, come on, it's 21st century, like integrate with Zoom or whatever that I can jump and I can discuss with like guys like you and ask my question. And because what I like the most in the Atlas and Summit that I can r write down my issues that I have currently in my setup of Jira conference, wherever and ca i can bring it to, to you guys and you can help me with my issues or problems or i can bring it to the atlassian mm, jira consultant or whatever or if i have a problem with add-on i just go to your booth and ask hey listen uh, how can i improve like the way how i'm using that or maybe i'm misusing your your add-on and i didn't know that and so on or maybe i can ask you for the feature it was many times it happened like that i brought my problem to the atlas and partner and after nine months six months one year i got that feature that i requested during the summit so yeah that's it from my side and i'm really looking forward for the summit next year and i hope it won't be re remote okay thank you all very much for the answers um and i before i open that up to the audience um uh, and we still have an audience yep uh we um my question would be i want to pick up what Lars said um what do you think about death of server in two to three years is that a realistic scenario would that be an end of days scenario how do, how do you even prepare for that because the well, uh, if, if I can jump in, so um, basically, I guess that the question has been broadened a bit um, uh, and, and we're looking at deployment models. So will the server license type go away? Probably yes, because it's not a subscription. So from a, from a revenue uh, uh, side of things, I'm pretty sure that sooner or later, uh, the perpetual license model that Lessing has for server licenses will go away towards something like the, the data center um, uh, subscription. And I guess the, um, the announcement that single node data center is now a feature um, uh, at least hints in, in that direction. So um, the deployment model, so on-prem deployments, that will not go away anytime soon. And, and um, I mean, e even though let's say 95% of, of, the, of the sessions and, and keynotes that we've been seeing um, had a strong focus on cloud or cloud related focus um, that there, there was still announcement and, and there is still a lot of initiatives um, that target towards getting your less in workload on something like AWS using quick starts, um, using more comfortable migrate, migration tool sets that Atlassian is developing and providing. So the, the deployment model on prem um, May it be your own bare metal, or may it be any sort of, of cloud provider, uh, AWS, uh, uh, GCP, whatever, um, will not go away anytime soon. I, I don't believe this. But so, yeah, I mean, I, five to ten years. Server, yeah, yeah but, but, but the server version. It's the server yeah. version. Data center will stay definitely, but, yeah. but uh, the server will die away. I think it's, uh, it's relatively clear if you look at. Um, um, the, the, the strategy that uh, Atlassian communicates is their number one priority is cloud. So they would like to get everyone on cloud, away from server, away from data center onto cloud uh, and have everyone start in cloud who starts new. 
um, that would be their dream world. Yeah. Um, and um, they might get there, but I think that is the, the much, much longer road. And we're talking five, six, seven, ten 10 years um, uh, down the line. Um, and, and the intermediate step is going to be um, server as a deployment model is going to go away. So it's migrate everyone who can jump from server to cloud and everyone who's not prepared to jump from server to cloud, get those people onto data center. Yeah. So I, um, which is currently I would not, starting, which is yeah, currently which, starting, which, which is starting. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and that's where Le Atlassian is uh, pushing where Atlassian, um, puts their money, yeah, I mean, revenue shares and uh, what partners get is all aligned now towards more of that mission than selling more server. Um, and um, so is there going to be an end of life announcement of the server deployment model in the next year or two? Um, I'm pretty sure that there will be. Yeah, I, I think anyone here would be surprised if there isn't, even though we don't know, yeah, but we'd probably be surprised if there isn't. Um, but data center, um, I would say, um, is going to stay around and it's probably going to stay uh, around for quite a, a long while. And you can see a little bit of that in terms of the new features as well. So virtually all interesting features that come to the on-premise um, type of deployment model is in data center only. Yeah, so so um, um, they put the pricing up on, on server. So if you want to start on, on server now, it's a lot less attractive than it has been. Um, uh, years ago, um, in the smaller user tiers, uh, data center can actually be cheaper, even um, to a degree. Um, so pricing up on server, um, more attractive features on, on data center, the intent incentive schemes for partners and app vendors to um, focus on data center and cloud. There is a very, very clear message that um, server is, uh, is not here to stay, I think. Yeah, and to 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 be honest, uh, uh, um, so so from my point of view, if you look to the industry, to some competitors, to Jira and Confluence, um, this is a way that Atlassian should be allowed to go because it's still a fact that, especially in the uh, issue tracking environment, Jira is not the most expensive thing. Uh, uh, around and maybe pricing was too low in the in the beginning of the years in the early 2010s uh, um, but now we currently see that we will uh, uh, have data center environments that needs to have a higher quality of support uh, 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 full full stack high availability environment and this is the industry that Atlassian focus on so and then server does not make sense from a technical perspective too mm -hmm. because nobody's looking so I, I had a discussion la last week with an insurance company to um, uh, uh, introduce confluence uh, with 100 users in a closed environment and we discussed that single server uh, uh, issue from a price point of perspective and they told me as a as, as a salesperson please do not discuss that on a price uh, level we start with a ha uh, environment uh, a high available and this is data center we do not start with server this does not make sense for us um, and i think this is the right way to think then and if there are companies with 50 users 100 users maybe within two or three years in the German market, they choose cloud, 80% of them choose cloud then. Okay. Um, one question for me, from last question for me before I promote everybody to panelists. Um, Atlassian's product portfolio has grown quite a bit. There were quite a few acquisitions, Opsgeny is, some kind of biggest um, from all those features or products um, which one is the most exciting f for you will jira remain the strategic product at least from my point of view is that the core of the business um, which other product um, there's not jira line and there's your portfolio management status page and whatnot um, 
will be important, you think, in the coming years? Well, personally, so maybe I, think I will start. Yeah, okay. 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 So from, from my perspective as a customer, of course, Jira will stay a number one, Confluence number two, but I'm pretty excited that they are incorporate that automation for Jira inside the product. So it's really cool feature, especially for, maybe not for us because we have a script runner or seal uh, for, for scripting, but for the co smaller companies, that automation is really needed feature. And I think I'm really happy that they acquired that stuff and incorporate that inside the, the tool. So that's really cool. And two years ago, we implemented inside eBay status page, which is a really cool product. And I never heard about that before the Atlas and acquired that. And we are using that for all our 10,000 users with quite success uh, that we reduce like emails and issues about uh, writing on the Slack when we have incident and so on. So we reduce communication and that email storm stuff. So I really like this. And I personally, I really like the status page. And about Jira Align, that has some pros, but if you have a Jira, you will not go for, you will not go for Jira Align. So I would look for the feature like that inside the Jira. That would be pretty cool. But, but we tried portfolio and I don't like that much that product because it's really complex and you need, really need that full-time person to manage all the groups manually, teams, capacity, and so on. And I think it's overwhelming most of the companies to to utilize that stuff. Yeah, that's my opinion on that topic. So Jira will stay always there. And I hope they will introduce more and more features like automation inside, out of the box. And if you understand, uh, Lars, you, you want to say Okay, that. yeah. Um, I, th I think um, the, the, the situation we are in at the moment with that bloody, bloody virus from hell, uh, that, that's a big game changer for all of us as well, because uh, what I've heard from other companies and like a huge uh, system houses providing IT solutions, they, 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 they have so many Office 365 implementations these days, they, they, they can't do them all and it, that's cloud and Microsoft will throw teams on top of it for free first half a year uh, and and so on and so on everybody is moving in that direction uh, you need to have your workforce in the cloud remote work from home they, you want to have them ready I've heard from a company with more than a hundred thousand people and their uh, VPN just supports ten thousand so they are really fucked at the moment, uh, and 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 they they all these uh, IT IT teams uh, they are now uh, like on, on on the call to to provide the right solutions, and this will of course change the entire market and the entire market because other huge massive companies will jump in, and of course uh, uh, like products I well of course Jira is a key product the strategic product. But now people are coming back to us for conference. And it's just like, okay, yeah, that's cool. You can do it on your own. No, <laughs> uh, uh, they're asking for some support. And we had like that uh, interesting use case uh, for COVID-19 COVID uh, crisis management platform uh, for like 10,000 people data center. Uh, and and uh, they, they were like, asking us, okay, uh, we don't have any money and we need to, this tomorrow. Is that possible? And Atlassian, AWS, and a couple of solution partner, they, they were just like providing all the apps and, and, and uh, data center licenses for 10,000 for free overnight. Uh, so but there is a demand, not only because of the COVID, but in, in, the, uh, in the end of the day, uh, it, it, there's like a, a game changer now and, and it will change and it won't be and won't go back to the way we lived and worked before that. Um, and and I'm, I think I think that's like sort of positive, but uh, everybody knows the side effects, not only having kids at home, but uh, have not, not having the, 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 the contact to the uh, colleagues as you, as you had before and like working like you had before. It's just like a, a bit of a challenge. Yes. And, and, and I think this will have a huge impact on the solutions uh, Atlassian provides and the solutions the clients are willing to pay for 
by cloud solutions. We have other ISV projects, ISV is like independent software vendors, and and like you, you wouldn't believe like uh, they are buying cloud only products if this product is the own is if the cloud option is the only option they don't think about it they just buy cloud products and they don't care a lot about data is stored in the us or whatever as long as the product is cool and as long as it is the only option you have and that's why i think atlassian from a strategic point of view should narrow is it's 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 broad offering like server doesn't make sense from a lot of perspectives, but like even in the marketing, it's mm, messy. Thanks. <laughs> I, I wanted to add something to the to the, the product question. Which one is the uh, most interesting product? So, from my perspective, uh, the acquisitions at all are on a low level. So. I don't think that GRR line will be one of a, 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 a great selling tool in that environment. Uh, um, it's 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 uh, connected to uh, strategies like uh, uh, safe or less or so large agile environments, and this is limited. Um, Ops Genie is a little bit better, but it. It is a, 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 a limited market for IT departments then. And if you have a look at Jira as a service desk, so Jira, not, not the service desk plugin for ex, to, to explain, so the Jira service desk product, there is a lot of space for Atlassian to develop this uh, uh, product. And we will see uh, within the next year that there is a heavy development on Jira service desk to get up with the other competitors in that environment as a, as a real service desk, as a real help desk environment. Currently, we sell Jira service desk because it's so well integrated into Jira. But if there is no Jira, it's hard to, hard to sell a Jira service desk then. And what we will see as a product development and as a single uh, product for its own is Jira service desk, five dot zero dot uh, something uh, in two or three years. Um, this is a development. Uh, then Atlassian is not a company for software developers and agile teams anymore. Then the Atlassian is a company for business teams. Okay. And this, this is the way they want to go. So just, just my five cents. I, I completely agree. Like uh, the, the most versatile tools will stay confluence in Jira because the, the, the use cases are just like the, the uh, or the tools offer the, 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 the widest flexibility to implement a lot of use cases. Um, whereas um, like it's a very narrow pass for things like Opsuni, even though we're big Opsuni fans because it's a great product, but there is only like, even in a very large company, there's only, let's say a small team who will benefit from something like an on-call duty scheduling and, and, and uh, a call routing uh, product. Um, but what Christian said is um, uh, for service desk is something that you could also see in the keynote, um, whereas they, they, will, they will add certain features uh, to your service desk um, towards ITSM change management, where, where this is not only something like you can implement a workflow, but there's definitely like first-hand features that, that support enterprise use of service desks and, and uh, especially for uh, for standards such as, such as ITIL or um, implementing proper change management without just like implementing any bogus workflow uh, you can find in the documentation. So this is this is where I believe that, that even with the latest acquisitions um, and in the in the overall product roadmap of Atlassian, they they mostly make a great sense um, for status page, uh, Trello, Opsgeny, this, this all is true. Your line is super narrow um, because you have to be really, really big to, to make use of such, uh, such a thing as, as your line. Um, but especially um, shaping, shaping the, the, the product feature set um, on data center uh, towards something like a wider adoption of service tests, something that we will definitely see more in the future. I'm gonna pick a different product that no one mentioned yet. So I'm gonna pick Trello. <coughs> um, no, I think what, what always amazes me about uh, Trello is how many people are actually using it. And um, 
and and for different cases yeah if i ask around in sort of uh, around my friends then um, no one knows jira yeah other than if they are a developer or um maybe work in it but other than that they usually don't know jira they usually don't know confluence uh, but a lot of them have actually trello accounts yeah and use trello at home or use trello in a small team in in the company um, and, and, and that was what always amazes me a little bit about Trello is how versatile it is and how such a fundamentally simple concept um, uh, has won so many um, uh, quite, quite dedicated users. Um, the, the shame from being an Atlassian partner or being a marketplace vendor is that a lot of the things that applies to being able to build a company based on uh, on Atlassian products and unfortunately doesn't apply to uh, Trello in terms of I uh, can extend it quite a bit with APIs but it's very hard if not impossible um, to make money with it and even Atlassian I think struggles to get people to pay for Trello and uh, not to use Trello but to um, upgrade to more the enterprise accounts and, uh, and, and pay for it. And, and marketplace-wise, there's um, nothing. But what I also feel, and that's quite interesting to see, is um, that um, Jira Cloud is going, um, uh, trying to bridge the gap towards um, um, the usability or simplicity of um, uh, Trello a little bit. If you look in cloud at next generation projects, next generation service desk, uh, a lot of the things that have been um, maybe great for enterprise, um, but hard to grasp for the normal user, like um, configuration schemes, issue type field schemes, and uh, all those crazy things um, are mostly gone. So you define your workflow, you define your fields on a per project basis. So it gives a lot more power into the hand of the um, uh, individual project administrator. With the enterprise background that rings to me, oh God, that's gonna be chaos. Um, and for an enterprise, it might very well be, but for sort of um, the 10 user free edition or your 50 or 100 um, people company using cloud, um, it actually um, increases the flexibility of um, uh, and, and the accessibility of Jira um, uh, quite a bit. So I can see that um, a lot of the things that make um, Trello so appealing, um, that they're trying to bring some of that in, into Jira to make it more appealing for sort of the um, smaller uh, customer side and, and people who pay for it. Okay. So um, I'm going to promote now everybody to panelists so that we can get a few questions from the audience. Um, and hopefully that will work. So... Um, one question from my side, why Zoom is working or not working, I don't know. <laughs> I have to find it out. Um, hello. Um, could Trello have a future as a user interface for a Jira Lite or something like that? I don't think so. But uh, uh, I, I'm not a heavy Trello user and I try to do some consulting with Trello in, in mid-sized companies and at the end, uh, uh, all of them decided to switch to Jira and Confluence. Um, Daniel, Daniel uh, uh, forced me to use Trello for the no cabin fever uh, 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 thing. And yeah, it, 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 it feels like left-handed, um, but uh, um, yeah. So, so the, the, the question about Trello is they did not board a product, they board 400 million users. Uh, and and, and, and that, that 400 million users had a price tag. And now it, this worse to convert the 400 million Trello users, part of them, 10%, 5%, 2%, to the enterprise uh, product. Uh, um, and I think at the end, uh, there is no or let's say it's a limited amount, a very limited amount of users, they have plans to pay for Trello. And in the percentage, the amount of users they want to pay for uh, Jira Cloud, uh, Jira Service Desk Cloud, and Atlassian uh, Cloud is, is bigger than. Christian, I, I, would, I would disagree. Whenever I see Adaptivist buying 
a new product from somebody else, I think, oh, that might be a power move. And especially in the current situation with the virus. And uh, I think I think that's, I, I, I would suspect that Trello will gain more market share and will be a profit center in the future. What we are seeing, and we do have a lot of customers that use both actually, um, it's just different audiences using the product for different things. So um, whenever you have audit requirements, um, you need to be able to, to have some, some audit trails to follow up years later or something, you want to have some sort of normalized data that you can query. This is not easily possible with, uh, with something like Trello. But there's definitely teams that, that start prototyping or start working, working on a product idea um, using Trello because it gives them more flexibility without going through their centralized uh, admin teams. Um, and then um, they, they might be allowed to use it internally, um, like uh, following the compliance guidelines uh, that their employer has, and then switching over to something like uh, Jira at a later point in time when the product idea took shape or something. So this is, this is where we are seeing a dual use of, um, of Trello and, and Jira and companies. But this, this uh, is what, 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 what Lars meant too, that the question is whether Trello is a profit center at the end or Trello is a user generation tool for the other products. And my opinion on a long term that it's, it's a user generation tool uh, mm -hmm. and, and not that much, not that much revenue on, on Trello. I've seen other products that are more like, uh, well, they're in between, in between uh, only pro uh, cloud only products. Uh, and they are in between Jira and uh, Trello somewhere. And from these enterprise companies, people are completely crazy and buying these tools. And it's completely cloud somewhere else, not in Europe, and uh, they are buying it. And they are paying more per user, a lot more per user, than they would pay for Jira, normal Jira server, or Trello at all. And it's, it's, it's totally weird. Yeah, so it's also a good point, like what you are saying, guys, because I can tell you from our perspective. So we are enterprise level of company. Yeah? So we have more than 14,000 people working all over the world. And imagine that we have a 13 Jira instances. It's either cloud data center server, everything. We are running plenty of trailers. I probably try to count once because it's not managed by any central service. So each team has can create their own trailer for free and they are using that. So we probably have like more than 20 or 30 instances of the trailers. So mostly used by the business units. And even I spent some time in the past that I went to that business unit and say, hey, listen, I'm the Jira guy. And how about migrating you to Jira? And I showed them how Jira looks like. And they said, Hubert, are you crazy? It's totally unusable product. They are one million button on UI. How I can use that? In Trello, I have one card, move left, right, that's it. And in in Jira, you have a create project to find a project, whatever. I see like 1 million tickets from all other teams all over the world. And they said, oh no, I would never use that. And so many fields. I just need a simple solution. That's it. So that was the, 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 the uh, what I heard from our users, uh, users of the Trello. And they said they will never move that. And even they are like propagate Trello uh, to other teams and I think even they buy uh, they bought uh, the premium solution because Trello can be also paid when you reach some level of users or cards I don't know exactly how it works like but I know that they move to premium and so on so so, so, you, gave like, me, so you gave me a great app idea yeah. uh, a Trello theme for Jira um, yeah. it's, it's, sorry sorry Christian. that's that's yeah. e exactly like uh, yeah. why zoom is successful at the moment they call it easy to use. It is not secure, it is not compliant, and it's not encryption, and so on. And people, because the image of that tool that's easy, everybody just needs to click once on one button, but it comes at a cost. And these costs are now, uh, it's, not, it's less, less important. And that's why other tools like shiny tools with like bubble, bubble gum colors and, and, and just simple cards to move around. That's why they are successful at the moment. 
and that's why they will be more, even more successful in the future. I'm not, not disagreeing. And I think um, if you take the Zoom example, um, I don't think Zoom is going to stay insecure. I mean, they get more secure uh, by the day um, because they are forced to. And um, uh, but security and ease of use is not always the polar opposite. Yeah, I think you can have um, tools that are easy to use and um, still have a high level of, um, of security. Uh, but uh, I think Trello beats um, Jira hands down in, uh, in, in the usability. Yeah, uh, and, and also by the fundamental approach, it's very easy for a team to start. I mean, Jira, you need to have a bit of a plan. Yeah? You need to have a little bit thinking about the workflow, maybe some fields and all of that crap. With Trello, you just hack in, have your list, create a second column, tomorrow you figure out that doesn't work, you create a third one, the day later you have a fourth one, you shuffle a little bit around, then you think, oh, it's all crap, let's rename them, reshuffle them. Um, but four weeks later, you figured out um, what is a working process and a working workflow for you. Yeah, And that simplicity you don't have in, uh, in Jira. And that's also why I think um, um, this, this migration and sometimes happens from people going from Trello to, um, uh, to Jira, um, once it becomes bigger, compliance gets involved or people think. Uh, but then you already figured out what your rough process is on, uh, on Trello. So it's much easier to move um, to something more set um, like Jira. Um, but Jira is just not a great tool to get started in if you're not a very well-organized um, planning-minded person, yeah? And uh, in IT, we maybe sometimes are. In um, compliance, we maybe sometimes are. Uh, but a lot of the people in business, um, hell no, I'm not. So that's why I sometimes like um, to shuffle around uh, cards before I uh, think about a workflow editor. So Trello is something like Jira, like uh, Jira was to Remedy 10 years ago or something like that. So it's a guerrilla product that gets you into a company. Um, yeah because you can use it easily and you can start from scratch in seconds. Yeah, and I think that's also why you can see or why I feel um, um, that the lesson is moving Jira Cloud in particular to be more Trello-y like, um, because it, it bridges that gap and it also makes it easier for people to go from, from one to the other. Uh, but to also answer the profit center thing, uh, I think um, Trello will make its money. That it's going to be a stand. It's, it's not just its purpose is to get people um, on onto Jira. Um, it will make money by itself. Um, there is no question about it. And I think it's going to uh, be a, a good acquisition for them. Um, and the additional benefit, which is also going to bring in a lot of money, that there's a, a lot of cross population um, for people going from Trello <coughs> to Jira. And I also think the other way around in terms of um, that Trello can be a fantastic way um, to show statuses or things of Jira tasks to non-Jira users. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So if you have your 500,000 core Jira users living, breathing Jira, knowing Jira, moving it, if you just want to publish a couple of dashboards, I call them, um, to the wide world, um, well, you just um, push that to Trello and have people look at the Trello boards. It's very easy and visual to understand for them, uh, especially if they don't have much interaction or things that just want to consume uh, what's happening where, then it's much nicer than, um, than Jira. Okay. One question for me, has, has Atlassian given up on small software development project? Have, to, have they given, basically ceded that territory to GitLab and GitHub and all those others? Or is that, uh, and, and are they really going in the direction of Salesforce? So we want to be a business product for business teams and software development teams are just one of those. But not the most I mean, If you look at what, what they're saying is they, um, <laughs> Uh, Want to be sort of in the uh, uh, top hundred thousand companies, uh, what they call it. Um, um, so I don't think they have purposefully given up on uh, on, on small teams or small um, software development teams. And again, that making Jira a little bit more Trello-like and those kind of ease of use. Um, 
uh, may also help in, in that direction. Um, uh, but I also think um, just naturally a lot of the products like um, GitLab, uh, GitHub and those things, they have a lot more features um, than, than they had uh, five, six years ago. So um, there is less of a need for, um, for a developer if they want issue tracking to go to Jira. Yeah, or go to a different product in, in the first place. Yeah, um, if um, if uh, I can just have that on GitHub, if that's sufficient for me, why should I go somewhere? So I think it's not so much them giving up on um, on that market, but it's just a, a natural thing that the need to step outside of GitLab or GitHub um, is a lot less than it used to be um, um, a couple of years back. Yeah. yeah, and and that's also true with some of the other tools. I mean, uh, we all um, say about Zoom and love Zoom, but the reality is, um, uh, the better at some point Slack, Slack video, and uh, even um, the, the Microsoft Teams video, um, X Skype, the, the more and better integrated and um, well that gives, um, then there is less need for someone to have a other video conferencing solution. If you live and breathe in Teams and at the moment, the quality isn't the greatest um, and the user experience if you do a video conference from there. But if you live in Teams as your chat tool and at some point it's easier and this, at least the same quality of uh, making a, a conference from there compared to, um, uh, to Zoom, then there's a lot less people who need to uh, be pushed out to Zoom. Okay. No, I only remember that we had um, discussions about Bamboo versus Jenkins and something like that a couple of years ago, even in our group, and, and those have more or less disappeared. I haven't heard about that topic in a long time, or Bitbucket versus GitHub or something. I don't know. Is that a discussion? Uh, sure, so, sure. From from uh, from mm -hmm. so with the customers, we have that discussions uh, yeah. uh, still. Um, um, to be honest, we feel that Bamboo is a little bit behind and it's not the first CI product to go, but we have some benefits with Bamboo too. And from the source code perspective, uh, this is what Christian mentioned. You have uh, different approaches and those tools like GitHub, GitLab, uh, and others developed within the last year. So there is another competition mm -hmm. uh, uh, than three or five years ago. Okay. So, but at the end, it's, 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 it's a decision uh, uh, from the users. If you look at the cloud offerings and for small companies, you have to have a look up to the, the cloud offerings then. There is no huge price difference between a Jira, Confluence, and a Bitbucket cloud, or for example, a GitLab Premium or a GitLab Enterprise for 50 users. It's mm -hmm. nearly the same from the pricing perspective, and it's a, a, a kind of the same feature set, depending on what you plan to do with that. If you look, if you look at the GitLab uh, uh, um, CI uh, uh, features, maybe a lot of startup company wants to go with them instead of using uh, the Bamboo way to go. Okay, no, I just, I, I was just thinking about something that Larry Ellison said a long time ago. Um, when he told his Oracle business units, we are either number one in the market or we are not in the market. That was his philosophy. So he picked his fights. He only, he only chose markets where he could be number one. Um, and um, I was thinking of it less in this is going somewhere in the same direction and saying, well, um, we cannot be number one in software development, for example, because we would be compete, have too much competition there. So let's go somewhere else where we can make more revenue and we can, can we, we can be number one or number two in that area. I think that would be, personally thinking, that would be a, a big mistake. I think there are some markets um, that are vast where there's space for uh, quite a few um, companies um, to play in. And if uh, if a lesson would just easily give up um, the position and the spread they have in in software development, um, mm. I think that would be a, um, a big big shame. Um, but uh, but you still need to be I think quite successful and a sizable player to 
um, uh, to, to play somewhere. And I think um, that's also, if you look at um, what they had with Stride and HipChat, um, that was a smart move to get out of that business because they couldn't mm. really see a way to be a substantial player uh, without being torn up between a, um, a Slack and uh, Microsoft Teams and um, uh, maybe you know, even Cisco WebEx or something like that. Um, so they could not see a way to, to be substantial and profitable there. But I think that's a different story in uh, software development and um, even IT service desk in, in the longer term um, or, or sort of request management in general. Um, so I think um, there's a lot of ways that that lesson uh, can go and, um, and, and will go and, and successfully so. I mean, I probably wouldn't be here if I wouldn't think um, that um, that lesson still has a long way to go. Okay. Other questions, topics from the audience? You can unmute yourself. You can ask a question if you want. Hmm. Okay. Seems this is the you end of You can activate your video. You can activate your video. Yeah, you can do a lot of things now. Um, <laughs> um, but it seems we are coming to an end. Uh, going once. Going twice. And... Thank you all very much. That was very, very educational. Thank you. That was even better than watching 10 hours of remote summit, I would say. Um, <laughs> it's a bit like um, compressed in one hour, all the things you need to know. Um, thanks again. With that, just a short reminder, we will be back next Monday with uh, Laurent Pai from SmartBear and talking about behavior-driven development and JIRA for requirements management and communication, which is another topic um, that is very interesting, uh, especially for software developers. So um, see you on Monday and this will be published in our YouTube channel, I think tomorrow when everybody had a chance to look at it. So. Thank you again. Have a nice evening and see you around. Stay safe and uh, yeah, till next time. Bye bye.